Michelle Jones, the uh, community liaison for the North End Rehab to provide an update. Obviously, we've come a long way with that. So we're, we're grateful for you uh, coming tonight to give us an update. Thanks. Thanks. So, I'm Michelle Jones, and I'm the community liaison for North End Rehab and Healthcare Center on 70 Fulton Street. This evening, I brought with me our um, administrator. His name is Sammy Almadi. So, um, we hope that we can answer any questions you have about the progress and updates and shed some light on what's happening over at the North End Rehab as well. You have some materials there in front of you, too. So. Good start, right, Excellent. Thank you guys for having us. Samuel Mahdi is the administrator of the North End Rehab. We're located at 70 Fulton Street, right where Fulton meets uh, uh, Richmond. Uh, we are a healthcare facility. We uh, specialize in long term and uh, short term as well. Uh, so the North End Rehab is basically a, a four story building. It's three of the, those uh, floors are dedicated to patients. Uh, the ground floor is uh, dedicated to rehab and some offices right now. Marquis Healthcare is the mother company that uh, owns and operates the North End Rehab. Uh, some of you are familiar with the, with the place that they have their loved ones over there, uh, but it has transitioned ownership uh, over the past uh, uh, year, actually. And November 1st, it will be a year for our company that has taken over that place from uh, Parkinson's Healthcare. Uh, we're very fortunate to be in the community. We're very glad to be able uh, to provide care and services uh, to your loved ones. Um, I'll try to go through the, some of the slides over here. Uh, so this is our uh, building, and this is an old sign. We were able to put a new signs over there. Uh, and the luminous over uh, uh, dark. Um, as you can tell over here, we're going through some construction since the takeover. Uh, of the facility, we have um, initiated a, a major construction efforts. We're targeting every floor and almost every room uh, within that facility. We're able to finish up uh, one of the units right now, the second floor, which is a subacute and long term. Uh, it's a mix up between now, uh, short term and uh, long term. Uh, it's new, newly and uh, beautiful renovated uh, uh, unit. Um, I encourage all of you to come for the next three days, actually, what we have is a, a turkey trot. So a, a community representative show up and do a tour. At the end of the tour, you take a turkey with you. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, Thursday and Friday from 8 to 7 p.m. Somebody will take you over there. Uh, Saturday is 8 to 12. Uh, I know the weather can be challenging these days, but you know, please feel free to uh, pick any of those times. Uh, at the same time, please excuse our appearance. So once you walk in the lobby right now, you'll see a big wall with a big sign that says "Pardon our appearances." But trust me, when that's done and over, you're gonna love it. I'll show you some pictures right now. Uh, if, and feel free to go to the second floor. Somebody will meet you over there anyway. We'll take you upstairs. But that will be the unit that you will be touring. Uh, we have a, we're working right now in renovating that lobby. We'll put a smart car in there as well. Uh, and it will be a big rehab gym. Uh, the second floor will have about 11 private rooms and uh, the rest will be seven private rooms and we'll have a long-term unit that will continue to exist there. Uh, our niche is cardiopulmonary program, so right now we are piping oxygen and suction machine into the walls, so that makes it look like a hospital setting. We have a cardiologist uh, on board, a pulmonologist on, on board, a medical director, and uh, also uh, specialty uh, medical uh, uh, director. Um, we can go through the slides. This is where we're located. It was a very interesting presentation. Now I need to go back and dig some holes over there. Because you're still on there. Uh, this is our caring team. Uh, my name is Michelle is there as well. You'll see some of the other names as well. Dr. O'Malley, some of you already know him. He's been there for years. Uh, I have to ask him which president was there when he was the medical director. That will be telling. Uh, thanks, uh, please. This is some of that. This is our cardiologist, Dr. Stephen Abraham. So we have a very unique collaborative relationship with Department of Healthcare. MGS is across uh, the street from us, less than a mile. So most of our referral comes from there. We do an average about 50 admission discharges a month. So a big turnaround building. 
Uh, we take Medicare, Medicaid, BMC, Harvard, and Aetna, and some of the insurances. If we, there's an insurance that we don't take, usually sometimes we'll be able to work out of the contract and you know uh, come up with a special uh, deal with the, to be able to take your loved ones. Uh, as I said, these are the hospitals that we receive referrals from, MGS Central Mass General Hospital, St. Elizabeth Boston Medical Center, uh, Beth Israel, Brigham Women, Tufts, and Spalding. And the closer uh, to us the hospital, the more referral we generate uh, and we receive from them. Uh, we do all those uh, specialty treatments. We do wound care, TPN, wound VAC, uh, trach right now, uh, and we're growing. Any, we have, uh, we're just did patient training with Mass Ironier. Our staff goes and train there, come with the patients if there's any special uh, uh, services that we need to provide, so we'll be able to help you with that. Uh, we have respiratory services, physical therapists, occupational services, uh, and speech service as well. Uh, we do ATG on site, not a whole lot of nursing homes that we'll, you'll see around that do that. It's not a telemetry, but at least we'll be able to do that. Bladder scan, uh, and uh, of course the doctors that I have mentioned to you, they'll be able to see you on site. Uh, instead of going and making a trip to go and see your cardiologist, we have them come to us once a week. And pulmonologists as well. As well, uh, we, of course, uh, we do uh, labs and x-rays on site. Uh, we contract with services that come and draw, withdraw the blood and then give us results later on. And that's, you know, typical with uh, other uh, nursing homes that you see around. Uh, pharmacies as well is similar to that. Uh, optometry, podiatry, actually the podiatrist is local, so somebody that comes here and uh, see them once a week. This is the layout, the structure of the private rooms that we're working on right now. Uh, this is the black and white version, but we'll have a color version for you. This is the new renovated unit. This is the nursing station, that's the second floor. Uh, we're welcome to see you tomorrow when you come for the turkey trot. Uh, and this is an example of one of the project rooms. New furniture, change the walls, put TV, flat screen TV uh, for every room, phone lines uh, for every room, so you have your dedicated landline. Yes, people still use landline, uh, and that's what we use it for. Um, and new furniture. This is also black and white picture of the rehab gym that's most of the ground floor. It used to be mostly offices, but uh, we moved the offices upstairs where the patients are, use some of the rooms over there, and we'll have a you know, big uh, common working area, an ADL suite where people can you know, exercise, you know, how to get in and out of bed before they go home. If a person that drives, we have a smart car over there, we'll be able to get in and out of the car. Um, we're not going to be using that because that would be a mess. But uh, this is what it's going to look like. This is not done yet. We're, the, the patient room picture that you saw, that you saw before, uh, the nursing station picture that you showed before exists right now. So I encourage you to see that. And I saw those pictures before they finished the renovation. I was like, yeah, it's gonna look like that. And it did exactly look like that in reality. So I can't wait to see that in reality. This is the rehab gym uh, reception area. Uh, this is gonna be the lobby. And some of you remember that cafe that was in the front. I love it in the winter. Big windows. Look outside, everything is white and nice and clean. Um, and now the families can visit there. It doesn't exist right now. We're working on it, but it's coming soon. And that's what the furniture is going to look like in that lobby in the ground floor. Some of the furnitures and uh, uh, fixtures that we use, and that's some of the examples that we use. We're working on the fourth floor right now. That's where it's going to be the uh, all private room, 29 of them on the fourth floor, piped in oxygen suction machine. Uh, and that's where the specialty program is going to be existing. Half of the floor is done right now. So if you go to the floor, uh, fourth floor, uh, we sectioned off half of it and we're working on it. Daytime, of course. Uh, and then once we're done with that, we'll move people over there and start working on that. Uh, so hopefully there will be no disruption of services. We, as I said, we still continue to have about you know 50 patients in and out every month, uh, and, and and hopefully uh, it's been running very well. It's been running very smooth right now. 
and we were lucky to have one empty unit to work on it, and we'll continue to operate with 100 beds uh, uh, functional and operational capacity. With that, I mean, I'm open to questions. I know that uh, we haven't been here in a while, so I look forward to taking some. Yes, please. Your predecessors said this was a possible meeting. They, they would have to ship everyone out to do this kind of work, and obviously you guys were succeeding at it. Uh, I'm wondering, you mentioned you have 100 beds. Have you had to um, decrease the patient load to uh, compensate for the, the ability to get the work done, or is it, are you still at the same patient level as always been? So it's a very good question. The predecessor had 100, at the last 140 beds, and we only took on 100 beds. And I, I think that's reasonable for a functioning uh, uh, facility, uh, lesser bed, you know, you know, would transition into a more focused building. Uh, so that's why we were able to uh, continue to operate without disruption of services. So going forward then, you'll always have 40 beds less than what the predecessor had? Yes. And that's why we were able to create more private rooms. Mm -hmm. There will be 60, 60 private rooms. 40, 40, 60 long term, 40 60. private. And, and how is it, uh, how do you determine uh, private rooms? Is it critically, those who are critically so injured? So it's, it's, it's another good question. Or? Yeah, the private rooms, you know, in, like in hospitals, uh, first you go with the clinical. Yeah, I yeah. mean, obviously if you uh, have an infection that needs to be controlled and you need to be isolated, then that's where it start off. And, and then later on, you know, some people would prefer to have a private room, so, you know, kind of pay plays yeah. into that, uh, and typical to any uh, healthcare facility. I was going to say, I believe that uh, partners, when they were there, also were short on beds. They had the ability to go to 140 beds, but they weren't filling all 140 right. beds. So partners so they say, were, we need to shut everything down. Yeah. No, I, I was just talking about the beds ratio. Right. So it's not like they're necessarily losing beds. It was around the same. Yeah, it's falling. Well, it's falling. I'm sorry. It's falling. Thank you. Yeah. I have to say, being the community liaison here at the North End was new to me. Um, I covered two other buildings in the Marquee repertoire, but not in Boston. And I want to say thank you to the neighbors and businesses in the area, um, from North End Waterfront Clinic to um, area restaurants and businesses. Everyone's really welcomed, um, welcoming with open arms. Uh, we're now friends with the Elliott School, friends of the Christopher Columbus Park, and friends of the uh, North End Library. We want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to come here and talk with you today as well. We're really looking forward to a great relationship in the neighborhood. We host yes. the luncheon here every uh, mm -hmm. every month. We did bingo, I think, last month. Mm -hmm. We're, we're grateful for the work and thank you. Happy to have you here, believe me. Uh, it's obviously a very important issue for years back, so good. Uh, good luck with your renovations. Of course, if there's anyone in the audience that has questions, uh, all right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Very much. Appreciate it.